Hello, I'm Bruce Harders, and this is Voices in the Village. Today we have with us Phil Duran, a 10-year veteran of Laguna Woods and 35 years in show business as a producer and writer in beautiful downtown Hollywood. Phil, thanks for coming and welcome to Voices in the Village. Well, thanks Bruce, thanks for inviting me and welcome back to the village. I know you've been uh, living other places, but it's good to have you back. Well, thank you very much. Yes, you know, it's been about two years uh, that we got together behind the good old camera. Wow, two well, years. What, what have you been up to all this time? I, I think I was in a coma. <laughs> I don't remember two years passing, but uh, well, what I'm doing currently is really, I think it's very interesting. Um, I'm doing a project through the video club here. And um, just to back the story up a little bit, my son works in, um, uh, in reality television. And uh, he and I were talking about ideas, and we came up with, well, that's an interesting idea for a show. And the way the reality world, TV world works is you make a three-minute sizzle reel, which is kind of like a movie trailer if you go see a movie. Um, because, of course, no one has the attention span to actually sit through a 25-minute show or read a script. So you got to show them, bam, 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 this is it, and hope it cuts through the haze. And uh, So we, 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 we were talking about how to do this, and I said, well, you know, there's a there's a TV studio here. And as I explored it, I was vaguely aware of it. And I said, boy, this is an amazing operation. You have a, a sound stage, you have cameras, equipment, lights, sounding, switching boards. You've got the whole thing. You have people who know how to operate them or anxious to do projects. And I said, let's do it here. And we did it here with some help from the people in the video club. <clears throat> and it turned out okay. It's currently being you know, sent around to various production what, companies. What is it you're doing here? Well, what I'm doing here, what, what I, after the, the sizzle reel we did sort of went on its way and went out in the world to see if there's a life to it, <clears throat> um, they, the video club asked me if I'd like to do another project through here, and they said, how would you like to do a situation comedy based on life in the village? I said no, because you have no idea how hard a sitcom is. It is just impossible. Even with the best writers around, it's drug awful. But I'll tell you what I will do. How about we do a senior version of the dating game right here in the village? Because what I've learned in my experiences with the senior world here uh, is it's a very vibrant senior community here. And it's very underreported in terms of who these people are and what they're doing and how they live. And I think it'd be a, a wonderful insight into that facet of our life here. You know, uh, our generation has reinvented aging across the board. And there's no reason why singles isn't also reinvented. And surely we are. And of course, you were involved with the dating game 100 years ago. That, <laughs> was, that must have helped you a lot in this a, development. 1785, I think it was. <laughs> I was the first job I had in television. I was hired on the dating game. Oh my this is the original bag that I carried around. I schlepped around in 1967. Been sitting in my sister's basement for 45 years. And when I told her, about I'm doing the show. She says, oh, I, got, I think I have your bag. So she sent it to me, and I called her up, and I said, the first thing I said, well, what happened to the bag of marijuana that was in here? <laughs> I never got an answer to that. But uh, uh, working on the dating game then was really a lot of fun. Right. It was, we're all young people, 20, in our yeah. 20s and everything, and we were very counterculture. You know, even though we were working for a major television network, we consider ourselves sort of underground and <laughs> hippies, you know, whatever. And so I'll never remember there was a time when the president, of, they, they had a new president of ABC came, up, came on board and he was in the West Coast viewing his empire. So he and his entourage came in to see the dating game. And um, so we're all sitting there in our, and we were a raggedy bunch. We're talking about 24, 24 year old guys Beards, long hair, fringe, necklaces, everything like that. And the president of ABC walks in and he's wearing a Brooks Brothers suit and he looks immaculate. And he looks at us and he says to his friend, he says, oh my God, hippies in high places. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think people like reality shows? Um, boy, it's a good question. Um, there's some reality shows out there that are so inane and so idiotic. You know, I can't imagine the, the brain activity of the people who watch them personally. but. Yet, in their defense, I have to say, as, as bad as some of them are, as, as, um, j just as uh, tedious as some of them are, there's a certain authenticity about this being real life. This is actually, it's not writers, it's not acted, it's not 
it's, it's basically a slice of life and people say, I know people like that, I am people like that, you know, and um, they're popular. You have to sort of slice up this market of, of seniors here, don't you? I mean, uh, by age groups, I mean, you're, you need to get the guys and the gals together kind of fit the same age well, group. Yeah, and playing the game, that's one of the considerations. And we face a kind of a, a, de a demographic problem in that there are more single women in this, in this village than there are single men, which is good news for the men, but not, not so much for the girl, women. But uh, one of the tasks that we uh, really embarked on is to find out what is the size of the single demographic in this village. Do we have enough people here to support us doing an episode a month or 12 episodes a year or something like that? I have to say the, the uh, reception from the people in, in a community so far has been wildly enthusiastic. I have a staff of almost 24 people wow. to do this show, all volunteers. And parenthetically, everyone related to the show, both <clears throat> in front of the cameras as contestants and behind the cameras as production, we are all residents of the village. There are no ringers, no outsiders. There are a lot of Hollywood people in this A lot village. of Hollywood, ex-Hollywood people who miss it and want to do it, not so much, maybe every day, but right. you know, this kind of thing. And the community around has also been very supportive. We've had people, a number of places step up to offer us prizes, like, uh, and, you know, we're going to show that after the game is played, we're going to show their first date. So what are the uh, breakdowns age-wise? Um, we have 55 to 65, 65 to 75, 75 to you name it. And, uh, now you've only shot one group so far, right? We've shot one game so far. One game. There's the hour, we, uh, Channel 6 gave us an hour to fill, and we feel we could do three games in that hour. And so we've got one, one of the three shot. And um, it's a uh, traditional kind of um, one, one man asks three women, and uh, all in about the 55, 65 age range. But um, we also are planning a show of all hundreds. Wow. So. Um, that's going to that's going to be really fun. How often? Uh, what what's your goal in, into uh, how many times a week or a day or a month or whatever you want to? What's your goal in trying to get how many uh, well, shows out there? My, at a time? my my goal is to do a consistently consistently quality shows, and that only only lasts as long as we have contestants. And I know that we put a push on to meet have people come in for a casting call and meet us, and many did, but many didn't. And I think that once the show gets on the air and people say it's fun, and it's, I want to be part of this, I think we'll, we'll get more, more contestants and we'll have a better idea how, much, how long can we sustain this. Is it more difficult to get men than women for the show? It seems to be. The men who we've gotten are really happy and enthusiastic about it. But a lot of men are like, oh, I don't know, you know they're going to make a fool out of me or am I going to look foolish or something. But you're not. Mm -hmm. You're going to come on, you're going to have a good time, you're going to meet some really lovely women and maybe go out with one. So it's a win-win. So that'd be plus. That'd, that'd be, plus. be a big plus. That'd be a big plus, yes. Well, how do you, how do you expect to promote the show so people know, you know this, where you are and, and when to watch? Well, we're planning a publicity campaign and it's going to be geared around the time when we ha w the show is ready to be aired. You know, nothing is more infuriating when they launch a big advertising campaign, everybody gets excited about a product, you go there and it's not in the stores. So this has to all be synced together. Uh, we're hoping to air maybe in February, we'll know better after in a couple of months when we finish the episode. <clears throat> uh, but uh, we will have a full court press in terms of in the globe on Channel 6. We'll have flyers, skywriters, <laughs> every form of communication, tweeters, Google, everything. We'll, we'll let people know, Facebook, all of various ways we can do it. PCM is very interested in helping us publicize it. The globe, Jennifer Carmarker and Barbara uh, Potter has been really, really supportive of it. And as, as I, I want to also say that merchants around the, around the area are, are very supportive. We've gotten coupons and vouchers from uh, the 19th restaurant, from uh, Moulton Park Auto Spa, from BJ's, from Titanium, all wanting to have, have a, a, a seat dinner at their place or as, as consolation prizes. So, uh, well, you know, it really, really sounds exciting. And I think uh, once people out there know about it, they're really going to start rallying around it. And I, I, there's no question, Phil, we're going to have to ba have you back in a few months after you've got a few more bruises you. on you. <laughs> and by the way, um, our, 
do people get embarrassed doing on that show? You know, it's a funny thing that <clears throat> having worked both ends of the spectrum here, there's a real difference between this game being played by 20 and 30 year olds and this game being played by 60 and 70 year olds. 20 and 30 year old people are kind of concerned about how am I coming off? Do people like me? What should I say? By the time you get to our age, we don't care. That's right. Say, I'm old, I can say whatever I want. That's right. And the gameplay is so funny because people are so frank about things. Yeah. So, Well, Phil, thanks so much for coming by. And for all you out there, I hope you come back again. This is Bruce Harders with Voices in the Village, and you come back soon. Bye now.